Hey, I'm David and welcome to Ethnosynology. Many of us have lost pets and when it happens, it's devastating. But we're not alone because our ancestors obviously lost pets too. And what we're looking at here is a dog that died over 25,000 years ago. We'll check the carbon dates later. However, this dog died. It was somebody's best friend, if not son, like my dog is and it died and they were devastated and they buried it in the ground for perpetuity, just like you and I would. Hey, I'm David and welcome back to Ethnosynology. Also, come here, nice. Good boy. This is Strider, you've probably seen him before. All right, now you can go away, go. <laughs> All right, anyway, and we're back. So. This is actually what archaeologists wear. I'm wearing my PPE, personal protective equipment. If I'm on a site, I want to be wearing something that protects me and protects the rest of my crew and the construction crew that we're working with. What we have here though, is a domestic dog burial. And if you see this, we have a dog buried right here. There's some artifacts scattered in. And if you see this ring around that, that's ochre. To us, as archaeologists, that tells us that this burial is cultural. We know this is a burial and not just a happenstance death because of two reasons. One, it's in a flexed position. It was intentionally placed there that way. And the other reason is we can see that there's culture in this burial. Culture is just human behavior across time, right? And we pass this on and it's what keeps us alive. We pass on culture to the next generation, teaching them how to hunt, how to fish, how to collect and how to forage. Teach our families and we practice a culture of burials and death. The other our humans, first of all, we bury our dead. No other animal does that. You can argue that Gorillas and chimpanzees mourn for their dead, and elephants might actually bury their dead too, but no other animal specifically culturally buries another individual of its species to preserve it for, say, the afterlife or for, for the next life. Humans don't really do this for any other animal other than dogs. We care for these creatures so much so that we want to bury them so that we preserve them and they can come with us to the afterlife as well. So you can see here, at this burial, let's say this is in ancient France where we find a lot of ancient dogs, Paleolithic humans in Eurasia would have been burying their animals just like this. So first, we have the dog. We can see its remains here, okay? But what we also have are three projectile points placed here facing west. Now, first of all, you should just notice that there's projectile points buried in there because that says something. But the fact that we can use observational skills and say that these are facing west probably means that this was some kind of ritual in which it was going towards the setting sun and it was being buried, going to the beyond, you know? So we also have here, if you can't see it, and I'm gonna pull that out with a color correction right now. All right, and we're back. So here we go. This is called ochre. And you might be aware of ochre as a pigment. I have some on my tattoo here, actually. And this is a pigment that's used by people worldwide in prehistory and it's found in a lot of burials, and it's actually what's used to make those hand sprays all over the world, including in Cueva de los Manos, which you'll see here. So normally, when an archaeological excavation happens, you do this by finding it uh, out of luck. You do this by finding it uh, from a backhoe excavation. You find it by doing your shovel test. You're never going to find a burial this awesome in the ground, right? It's, it, it's rare, and this is a coyote that died, like, probably a year ago, less. It's preserved, and when you find this burial in, in in actual context later on, it might be in a cave, it might be underground. Either way, it's gonna be a mess. There's gonna be bones missing. You're not even gonna be able to tell it's a dog. We are really fortunate to have this dog here. The oldest dog burial comes from Bonnover Castle, Germany, and it's about 14,000 years old. It's a puppy that was buried with two humans, and it was buried intentionally. What's also interesting about this puppy is that earlier in its life, it had canine distemper, and we can tell that by analyzing its bones. And the canine distemper affected the body earlier, healed, which means it was fed and cared for by humans, which is very interesting because why would we waste time feeding an animal when we could just feed ourselves? That shows that we actually had care for this animal and we had a culture that told us that dogs were okay to. However, later died or it was sacrificed eventually to live with the dead humans and it was buried intentionally and placed there so that it could probably live with the human in the afterlife. That's pretty badass. Here we go. Um, I would say one of the most interesting dog burials that I have seen uh, or, or you know just come across in research is the one in Ein Malaha, Israel. There's an Natufian woman about middle-aged 
that was buried with a puppy. And you can see her, and I'll put the picture up here, she's buried and you can see that her hand is placed on a puppy. And the puppy probably didn't die at that age or nor did the puppy die and the human was sacrificed. Let's be real, the puppy was probably sacrificed to live with the human. That says something because that means that the humans believed that they were going somewhere in which that puppy should come with them. So they killed the puppy to live with them. That's pretty damn cool. We find human burials often, but we don't really bury other animals. So when we come across dog burials, this tells us something super interesting about our species in the past and our ancestors, because we put so much care and thought into, into preserving these animals for the afterlife and for perpetuity that we can also take these studies that we find with the dogs and apply them to humans. And sometimes these burial practices are similar, if not the same. And we can't necessarily take a time machine and go see what it was like to live with my dog 10,000 years ago in the Ukraine. However, if we find a dog burial in the Ukraine and we study it and collect all the scientific data we can out of there, we can finally tell ourselves something interesting about what happened and we can reconstruct that past life of that person who lived 10,000 years ago in the Ukraine. Her dogs have been around for at least at least 15,000, if not 30,000 years. That's a long time. In that time, we've been burying dogs, probably not as early on as 30,000 years, but later on as dogs and humans started forming a relationship, we started to bury them. And this can tell us all sorts of things about human culture, human thought, and human behavior, which is what archeology span is. It's the study of human behavior through time. It's not just looting tombs, it's not about mummies, it's about the behavior that we had. So what I think is most interesting is that when your dog dies, hopefully never, you're gonna have to cremate it or you're gonna have to bury it. So think about it, whether you think your dog is going to an afterlife, whether your dog is just gone, whether their dog is reincarnated into something else, when your dog eventually passes, remember that dogs have been passing away for 30,000 years and people have been dealing with the same shit that we are. It's really hard and it sucks. But what we can do is look at this and we can say that somebody 15,000 years ago shed tears in this very spot, probably sobbed, played music, had some kind of ritual and put their dog to rest and we are looking at it right now. But we see this dog now, we are collecting data from it and we are adding to the larger human story about what happened in the past and I think that is what is most badass about anthropology. <laughs> hey, I'm David and welcome to Ethnosynology. Many of us have lost pets and when it happens, it's devastating. Really, really kicks you in the balls. It's not, <laughs> it's, it's not, it's not great. That's not a good look. It just like really ruins your day. <laughs> <So bad. laughs> just go with the many of us have lost pets. Man. And it's devastating.